So Art Circle uh, is a sort of a community of visual artists and art lovers. Uh, it's a it's a very new initiative that uh, I started uh, very recently, uh, being an art lover myself and uh, and a amateur artist. And, uh, so this is uh, part of my interest right now. Um, Andrew is uh, is from Bangalore, and uh, I would have him give his introduction of uh, his own journey as an artist, uh, uh, from being a marketeer to to be an MFA now and uh, pursuing his art practice full time. And then he will walk us through his uh, his session details, like how uh, how his session will span in one and a half uh, hour. Uh, after that, uh, we uh, we would actually like some of you to share some introduction of yourself. Where are you joining from, and and your interest uh, in visual art and in abstract art in particular? Uh, if there is something that we should address in this session, um, I I can see we have a lot of people joining in, so we may not be able to have everyone speak. But um, I would take a few names. Uh, uh, here and there, and I'll ask you for your introduction. And if in case I don't take your name, and if you really want to talk, uh, then just please raise your hand and uh, we'll have you talk to us. Um, so good. Um, so over to you, Andrew. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the session. Um, till the time she's doing that, I will take you through my journey in a bit. Um, so basically, like any other person, like any other person who's trying to find his passion, I started off drawing and sketching and painting when I was a young kid. Uh, and during my college days is when I started getting more serious about art, I think. Um, and from there, the journey began. And I had done some, um, I started doing some, some of my works. I had done some of my paintings then, like in the sense I had showcased with some galleries, uh, with in a in an arts event sort of like it was called the it, it's in Bangalore it's called Soul Sante it's sort of like an art event wherein you have food fashion and art um, and during that time I had showcased my first set of paintings which I had painted um, so a lot, a lot of my works basically my journey has been dabbling between pursuing my passion and also having a job in hand so that I can uh, pay for the paints and a lot of other materials that I buy for my work. Um, and it's not easy. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time and patience. Um, I'll just sh one second. Yeah, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay, can I share? Is it sharing? It's not. No? Yes, it does. Okay, interesting. So, um, yeah, so it's been a long journey. It's been 10 years since I've been painting and um, creating works, been exhibiting my works. Um, one of my most um, prestigious moments in my life has been when my work was published in Oxford Encyclopedia in 2015. Uh, my work, Mighty My Savior, which was basically a painting of uh, Christ the Savior, was a dream that I'd seen, a vision that I'd seen, which I'd painted, and it got published in Oxford Encyclopedia, which, which basically gave me sort of like this um, a push towards um, being seen by media, being seen by galleries, because it's tough to have your work uh, displayed in galleries. Um, I think not, not, I wouldn't say like, it's more about like validation and a lot of people validate art with the success that you have. Um, it, it's, it's not just on your talent basis. Um, so the, the first, uh, so the, the, the session uh, Prerna had sh shared was how to decode abstract art. And I 
I I know by the end of the session, I don't think any of you would be able to decode art, but I assure you that you'll be able to understand what abstract art is or what it broadly means. Um, and so the session will go with, I would give you an idea about how abstract art is and a brief, very, very brief history about art and how abstraction came into existence. Because if you go deep into art and understanding abstraction, uh, it'll never end because it's a long process. Um, so uh, there are a lot of pictures and there are a lot of uh, activity, not a lot of activities, but there's one activity which will help you understand better what abstraction is. Um, and I would take you through two of my works, one painting and one video work, a film. Um, so that's about it. Like, uh, And then finally, I'd, uh, I was working with Yahoo. The last company that I worked with was Yahoo before I moved to London to do my master's in fine art. Um, and that was quite a tough decision because it was quite a good, well-paying job. But heart of heart, I knew that I wanted to pursue art in a much serious way. And, and I then quit my job and moved to London to pursue my art studies. Um, and then because of Corona, I got... Okay, so I think she'll take you. Okay, thanks, Andrew. It was a great introduction. Um, I want to have you people in our audience speak to us about uh, themselves and uh, their interest or any experience with abstract art. Uh, so I'm just going to take a few names. Um, I would see uh, there is someone, uh, Kriti Maheshwari. Kriti, do you like to speak about uh, yourself? Hi. Uh, I'm Kriti. Uh, I've, uh, I'm actually, a, I'm into education sector. I have uh, recently done my MED and uh, my interest in arts uh, was from uh, childhood only, but uh, it mainly emerged in the time when I was doing the BLA uh, graduation. My uh, I was doing a, I have a class for art and craft uh, for education. So we have to make the props, art structure. Um, the, it's like a storybook kind of thing to teach children to use them for our education purpose. So uh, then I, it emerged at that, that, that time. From two years, I'm, I love making art. So I'm uh, exploring different forms. I have no idea about abstract art till now. So I have, uh, that's why I was in, I want to attend this session so I can know something about abstract art. Great, sure. And I hope you, you learn something and enjoy the session too. Yeah. Um, we have uh, someone, uh, Sashwati Nayak. Sashwati, do you like to talk about yourself? Okay. Uh, we then have Mindy. Uh, Mindy, do you like to share your introduction with us? Okay, uh, we have Priyanka. Priyanka, do you want to talk to us about your your interest in abstract art? Priyanka Jain. I think we need to chat thing just an amateur. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, then who else um, who wants to speak? Uh, we have Pallavi with us here. Uh, Pallavi, do you want to share your experience or your interest? Uh, yeah, I am actually a German language translator, and I'm also learning Japanese right now. So my interest in art and painting came through my grandfather, I would say, and uh, also while learning languages, we came across some artists and uh, also. Uh, introduction to museums and then actually i wanted to learn more about art and uh, various forms of art yeah I see okay um i'm gonna have just one or two more names now and after that maybe we shall start the session and maybe 
uh, towards the end, we can have a few of our audience speak to us more. Um, I can see uh, there is someone, Hitesha Mukherjee, if she wants, if Hitesha wants to talk to us. Okay, um, then um, let me see who else. Diksha, do you want to talk to us? Hi, Prerna. Hi, Andrew. Hey, hi, Diksha. Hi. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm a graphic designer and uh, my interest in abstract art started from museum, to be honest. You know, where you see so many things and you don't know how to decode it until unless you read the Wikipedia page about it. Right. So, so that's why I'm here to see what this is about and learn more about it. So, yeah. Great. Okay, sure. Um, we also have Kartar here. I know Kartar, you already messaged us in the chat. Do you want to say a few things before we start? Okay. All right. I think we'll start, but, uh, but it was nice talking to you, Diksha, and a uh, uh, few of you guys. Uh, it was good to know your interest. Uh, um, I'll, I'll put it over to Andrew now. Andrew, do you want to take us through the yeah. session? So the session is, um, it's very simple. I'm, I have made the whole, it was quite text heavy earlier, and Prerna told me to make it much simpler so that everybody enjoys it. There are a lot of GIFs that I've added, but like, I think a lot of GIFs have been revealed already. <laughs> but let's take you through this. Um, okay, first I'm gonna ask you a question to everybody and everybody, sh if whoever wants to answer can answer. And if you don't feel like answering, it's okay, but you can even send it on chats. Um, how many of you have uh, been to galleries, museums, um, exhibitions, art fairs, art trade, trade fairs and seen uh, paintings or sculptures or films um, and it's made you puzzled and confused because you don't get the context of it or um, you're not able to understand what it means. Um, how many of you have had the same experience of seeing art and being... Yes, it happens a lot. Yes. It happens a lot? Yes. <laughs> Could you specify a little bit on which exhibition you went to or which museum you went to or which artist that you see or? it was a, a wooden sculpture uh, exhibition in bangalore okay it was a couple of years back uh, on kanakpura road uh, so there uh, the sculptures are very uh, great works of skill but i couldn't understand many of the concepts uh, even though they uh, explained I'm sure they had something else in mind and probably us as a viewer had something else in mind. Okay. Thank you. That was could you tell anything? I'm sorry. Can't figure out who it is. Uh, hello, sir. Good evening. Hi. You can call me Andrew. I'm not. Okay. You can call me, sir. Good Please. evening, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Tate Modern in London. Um, you know that contemporary art or sometimes like in the surface, you don't understand anything unless you read the caption, what the artist is trying to say, all those things. Yeah. But some are very simple. Like uh, there was a mirror. We just need to see in the mirror and we interpret whatever we think. That's it. So it's up to the viewers, whatever they think. So the mirror was, you just saw a mirror or was it like, yeah. it was like a convex mirror? No, no, no. It was a normal uh, looking Plain. mirror. Yeah. By who? What was the artist name? Do you remember? Was it Anish? Uh, no, no. It was before two years. So I forgot. No, no, not Anish. It's not Anish. Uh, yeah, it was not. So the mirror is not placed on square shape. He built in uh, all the sides, four sides. Okay. So it was just to take selfies and post it in in Instagram, something like that. It's as simple as that. Uh, okay. Mm. So, um, 
so yeah so you have seen that different thousand times i think now because of my uh-huh. accent mm. uh, this is how do you feel like this when you so very simple and i think it's not fair for the artist yeah, who but, is, no uh, it's not it's nothing see everybody is in everybody has their own interpretation to yeah you may like true. it you may not like it correct Mm-mm-mm. so it's definitely like there's nothing wrong in it if you don't like uh, it you don't like it if you like it you exactly. like exactly yeah 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 uh, it's like even liking a person it's the same if you like a person you like a person if you don't like the person mm. you can't force somebody to like something exactly okay yeah? okay and then you mm. see things like these in the market yeah 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 how many of you remember this so this was from a exhibition in art basel which happened and this banana was sold a copies the artist copies of these bananas were sold for 120000 dollars wow <laughs> so you see all these things and uh. it confuses you and it makes you wonder what art is all about is it about money is it about the artist history or what he's making mm. uh, also there are different aspects to it and there is a sort of a chain of study that you need to understand where it's led to abstraction mm. uh, this comes in the realm of conceptual art which mm. is far in depth and there's so much to read about it but yeah. like something that you don't understand or you don't grasp or you are not able to comprehend doesn't fall in the category of abstraction just because you're not able to understand it yeah yeah okay mm. so there are various studies uh, on art and there are li- different languages so abstraction abstraction is just one of the languages in painting yeah yeah mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true that's how it works uh and so we have i think a lot of you have looked at paintings and sculptures and asked this question abstract art is it really art when you see people selling it for that much price or you see a colorful painting with a lot of brush strokes and you're like oh my my kid can do that or mm-hmm. i could have done it it's an accident maybe or is there a certain way to understand abstract art <laughs> so i'm going to quest- i'm going to address all these questions through the whole session uh the third question being does every abstract painting have a meaning behind it okay so as we go through the whole thing uh let me give you a brief history about art in general and it's going to be very brief and it's going to be very fast so i'm just i've just added images in it so that you are able to recollect and remember as we go through so from the olden times we had uh kings and queens and the rich uh because there was no cameras and there were there was no the photography had still not come into existence uh a lot of these artists very skilled artists were given commissioned works to paint these rich people uh or monuments or uh sc- do sculptures or make sculptures of those people or even uh paint uh churches and cathedrals all over the world and it's been going on for centuries so uh, from the 14th and 17th century the most the two most fa- famous figures that i think everybody knows about them is uh you have you know who's the artist for this work anybody is this da vinci or rembrandt yeah it's da vinci correct so this is leonardo da vinci's painting called the salvador mundi um and so him and uh, there's another artist who were very well known in the 14th to 17th century there's another artist who's who painted oh michelangelo correct uh so these artists had the role to play of creating works which were exactly or sort of like as close to reality as possible because that's what the people who had commissioned them works wanted from them okay and as years went by people started artists and uh, sculptors started seeing different ways of expression and in the 1870s in france we had the rise of impressionists whose work is this is Monet. it monet correct so the the impressionists used to work with the quality of light the changing quality of light and they didn't want to replicate the reality exactly but they still wanted to be as close to the reality as possible who is this uh 
Uh, so I Rembrandt. guess Rembrandt. Correct. Yeah. correct. So <laughs> if you go to see the change from here to here has been how how they're playing with light. Correct. The so the impressionists started moving towards just how figures and light behave in a painting, and then after the impressionists came post impressionists and artists like this guy. Who's this guy? Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Correct. And what's the painting's name? The Starry Night. Starry Nights. Amazing. Because it's replicated every day. Starry Night. Wall bags have it, shoes have it, wallpapers, phone covers, everything has Starry Night. But so these these artists are known as post-impressionists. And they started moving much away from light, uh, much away from uh, the realistic world. And they were using color, texture to create their works. You understand? From year to year, you see? the textures that have started coming in. So these are post-impressionists. And you had another painter from post-impressionist time that was Cesar. I don't think any of, not many of you would have known. <laughs> Sorry. Paul Cezanne, yeah. Like, uh, his painting has a proper outline for like every art he makes. His yeah. outline is very obvious, yeah. So he has, so, uh, and then, after the post impressionist came what what is this whose art artwork is this came fauvism which is another work uh, another uh, a style of art wherein it was not just textures it was not just lines it was not just light it was colors bright striking colors that would grab you and pull you into the work and that's this work is by henry matisse which later on, so oh, like I would take you through the process. Uh, so this was Fauvism, and then after this came, whose work is this? Picasso. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, this is Picasso's work. Uh, came Cubism, and you had artists like Picasso and. Oh, sorry. Okay, I didn't have the other artists. So after, in Cubism, you see it's destructured. It still works with line, color texture but they started destructuring the whole reality of things and that's the beauty of art and the idea was basically things around people structures objects one being light and one being texture if there was no light in the room how do I even switch this light off? Like right now, my features of my face dull down a bit because there's no light, but you still see texture to my face. But when there's light, there's more clarity to my face is because it brightens up the whole space. And so abstraction, if you break down the idea of abstraction, it's about the idea of line, texture, color, and light. Sorry. That's also art, by the way. Okay, so uh, moving on. Um, and after this whole period uh, came a lot of other things that happened. There was World War One, World War Two, and then artists started and they were not able to understand and comprehend what's happening around the world. And they started losing faith in humanity. And the only thing that made them happy or they could find hope in was themselves. And then they started moving towards looking into themselves and seeing how expression worked for them. And you, just uh, one minute. Uh, I think someone, Ria Bhavnani, uh, you are unmute. Maybe there is something in the background at your end. If you could put yourself on mute, please, Ria. Yeah, I think we can start, Andrew. And we have a hand, uh, one second, we have a hand raised by Hitesh. Hitesh, do you have anything that you want to speak? Oh no, this was, this was way back. <laughs> um, I should probably take that off. Sure, no worries. All right, Andrew, you can start again. Okay, so, um, so after, after this came, um, how abstraction came into existence is how uh, in the late 
19th century, a lot of artists after this whole calamity that was happening around the world, there was world wars and uh, there was pain all over, misery all over and uh, artists started moving towards understanding how they felt about things and expression had to be brought from within and not from the reality. And that made them to look within themselves to see things and experience themselves and create art, which was purely based, not, I wouldn't say completely based on emotional ideas, but there was still sense of self involved in the work of art. And then came abstraction into existence. Um, and one of the finest works of art being done by an artist named uh, William de Kooning. I don't know how many of you have, how many of you know, you know about this artist or have seen his work in person or in museums? Uh, could you repeat the name? William de Kooning. William de Kooning. No, don't remember. So he has been the pioneer of abstract art. Uh, he was one of the first artists who moved towards abstraction and he started using colors so vividly and the brush strokes and the way he textured his uh, canvases. Um, so all these things creating, so his idea was very closely related to how musicians work. Like in his understanding of abstraction, he felt that art was like music. It had to create sort of vibrations when, it, when you look at it. You know, you cannot see music, but when you hear it, there's a sort of a calming effect that happens to you or whatever, not just calming effect. It can be anything, any sort of genre that you listen to creates that sort of vibration within you. And came the next big name in the art world and the field of abstract art was this artist. I don't know how many of you know. This. Jackson Pollock. Correct. So Jackson Pollock came up with this whole. So if you go to see as years moved ahead and people started these same artists in their previous years of working as an artist used to paint something what you saw here and then they started moving towards abstraction is because everybody at one point wanted to see how they felt about things and and everything just became too personal and art was not just about creating what's outside but what's inside is what became important so Jackson Pollock was one of the first pioneers of drip painting. Like he introduced drip painting to the world. Uh, these paintings may not look like I also wasn't the biggest fan of Jackson Pollock till the time I saw him live, like not him because he passed away long back. But when I saw his paintings live in Tate Modern and I saw uh, works displayed in a gallery in White Cube um, and that gave me the magnitude and the scale of this work and how massive these works are, but they also have such story within them when you look at them closely. And then came another artist who is very, very well known for his color based color theme works, Mark Rothko. His works are purely about color. And his idea was to bring the viewer inside the painting. And a lot of his works is about pain and sadness and death, but like uh, everybody has different sort of emotions when they see a work of art by him. And none of his works have sort of any structure to it as such, but they all are very lucid, uh, floaty, uh, have like this beautiful quality. The, the pain that he uses and the way he uses these paints have a very structured method to it. It may look very simple, like right now I may pull a piece of paper and then put yellow and put maroon and a little bit of purple and black and make this work, but it wouldn't ever closely even relate to this work because it has so much of layers of paints to it. And there's a method to creating a Rothko. Um, Cause I did a little bit of study about Rothko's work and I had done a study work, which I'll show you in the later part of the session. Then you had, so abstraction wasn't in now, why there are a lot of uh, people from say America and UK and, uh, and Southeast, uh, uh, 
more of the European names in art is because abstraction had still not reached India because a lot of Indians were still making a lot of fine work, which was portraiture and uh, Madhubani painting, which there was a session of by Art Circle. The previous session was by a Madhubani artist, miniature painting artist. Uh, miniature, uh, miniature, miniature artist. Miniature paintings. <laughs> uh, so, so a lot of art, abstraction had still not reached India. So when our artists, Indian artists, had started moving towards um, Paris and different other countries, they started seeing works by Rothko, by Jackson Pollock, and then they sort of had their own interpretation to it. And then they started making their own works, which were quite abstract in nature. And one of the names in Indian abstract art is S.G. Vasudev. Sorry, uh, uh, V.S. Gaitonde. Sorry about the names, because there are a lot of names in art. So this is uh, V.S. Gaitonde's work. His, he didn't call his work abstract art. He called his work uh, non-objective because there's no sort of um, structure to his work. There's no lines as such, but there is just pure color uh, and the, Indian, the gradients of different colors mixed in a work. Um, his philosophy, and he had stud he'd studied a lot of Zen um, philosophy and and that's how his works have this very strong effect of groundness like it's quite grounded when you look at the work you feel humble humbled and there's some sort of like peace that you see when you see a work like this uh, i had an opportunity to see this work in saffron art in mumbai um, and then you had another abstract very popular name sh raza whose whole work structure has been lines and squares and rectangles and semicircles, um, but it's purely abstract again. Uh, these kind of works are again known as, uh, it's called, the artists usually who do a lot of color work are known as colorists and, uh, uh, and the style of work that he did was geometrical abstraction because there was a lot of geometrical shapes involved in his work. Um, there's a very, if you read about uh, S. Raza, you'll understand that you see this, uh, can everybody see this uh, uh, cursor? Yeah. yeah. yeah so yes. you see this circle, the black circle in his uh, work. If you go to see any of his works, uh, there is this bindu, it's called the bindu. He calls it the bindu the black bindu in all his works. And there is a story behind his, uh, this use of this bindu in all his paintings because, uh, so as a kid, when Raza was a kid um, and uh, there was, during his maths class, his teacher uh, had punished him uh, for talking in the class. And then he, he drew a, a circle with the chalk on the blackboard. And that memory, left this mark in him. So basically he, the maths teacher did that for him to concentrate. And, and that sort of like left this very strong mark in him and that mark became his story in all his paintings. Like all his works have this black bindu and it's sort of like this idea to concentrate and to look through a work and um, you know, take it all in. Uh, as you look at his works and his works have, he was 99 when he passed away. And at the age of 99 also, he was still painting um, and his hands were still steady using the brush on the canvas or any medium that he used, paper and uh, wooden panels. So do you guys have any questions till now? Um. Where does surrealism fit in, in this timeline? Oh, so that's a different uh, timeline. Like it still has like in Fawism and post-impressionism, there were still breakdowns. Like abstract has a breakdown of expressionism, geometrical abstract, color abstract, action painting. Uh, oh, okay. So there are a lot of, uh, like if we get into that, we will never come back. <laughs> no, that's good to know. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, 
so everybody is clear now not clear but let's move on we'll move on to the next session next part of the session yes sure so i'm going to take you through a process of my painting a, a painting that i've done in london uh, the title of the work is conversations in the dark um and so this is a raw unprimed canvas and it's it took me about a month and a half to finish this work but you'll see the development of the work so that it gives you a much closer process understanding of how i work so i do a lot of writing um it's a part of my process every artist every artist not just abstract artist but every artist has their own sort of style of process uh, in creating work and not everybody has the same it's like how many cricket fans here i think a lot of cricket fans would be there <laughs> but lot not every batsman has the same style of uh you know batting everybody has their own way uh and that's how every artist has their own way of creating a work of art um so i do a lot of writing on my canvases so there there's there's a lot of background writing it's just to take this confusion off my head or a question that's in my head that i'm i'm thinking about i would write it down and i keep working on it so this was the time when i was researching about mark making the idea of color field painting um and uh, mark rothko is one of the pioneers of color field painting um and this work you you cannot see the writings anymore but there is still a bit of writings in my work which are visible uh, can does anybody have a question on this can you just explain uh, yeah your name uh, for the topic explains that it's a conversation in the dark that's the concept but as you mentioned that you had lot of writings and you took one and a half months so what was exactly going on when you finished this painting and during the process okay so so all artists or okay firstly for me when i am doing a work of art it takes me i don't start multiple works together i start just one work at a time or max two works um and the process has a lot of involvement with uh the brushes that i use the techniques that i use uh the mixes that i do um and also it took me one and a half months to finish a work is also because this was a oil work so oil painting okay. takes a lot more time than acrylic works uh acrylic mm -hmm. can dry within like Two three hours, uh, depending on how many yeah. layers you have put. But uh, oil paintings take much more time uh, to dry. Okay. This was uh, uh, and all. The, so 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 this work personally for me has been uh, a questioning of my practice because I've never used black a lot in my works. Previously, I uh, a lot of my works were much much uh, color based. Like there was a lot of colors in it. uh but as you move in your practice you find a rhythm or sort of like a comfort place where you start knowing that this is what you're good at um and only with like a lot of work experience it's just like working in any other place as a musician or in a, as uh, as any other as a dancer if you if you have the talent of dancing you know that as years progress is when you know that you get better at it and that's how for artists it is like you keep working and you keep painting and uh, at one point or at multiple points you'll see uh, a a sort of like a turn that that you'll take and you know that this is what you like and this is what you 
that is your expression is all about um so this work was basically a time when i was questioning this idea of mark making the subconscious and how i felt about things it was sort of like a self reflection on my process and my practice and my work is about the process it's about the materials that i use the elements that i use in my work um and that's about it. okay thank you so much andrew and this is another work i don't have the process pictures of it because this took another it took about 2 months to finish it's a work on oil using pastels and pigments this is uh, a reference or sort of like a study work on mark rothko's application of pigments um you know mark rothko right i showed you the work of that artist so this is mark rothko's work uh, if you google mark rothko you'll see a lot of his works and uh, so i used his process uh an understanding of how he mixed pigments together and created this work so it's not a exact replica of his work because that's not what the intention was it was to understand the process of mark rothko's application so i i the in a brief and i would tell you that he had this way of uh, mixing oil paints he would mix pigments in a in a glass jar with uh, 30% of solvent and 70% of oil and he would mix these pigments and leave it for months and i exactly did how he follows his procedure uh and he leaves it for months and then when you open the jar you cannot move it it should be unmoved and you open the jar the top part of the layer has the most uh translucent pigments mixed with the solvent and the oil and then you use that to start uh, layering the canvas and by the end of it you start using the uh the the jar with like the end of the jar you will have like much thicker pigments and then you use that to layer your canvas and that was basically the process in creating this work and it has a lot of pastel uh, oil pastels used in it it was to create this depth the effect of depth uh um yeah so this is that work and that's the reason it's the title is untitled um so i'm going to show you a small part of this work this work um is called the world can wait um i started indulging in a lot of uh, films and uh, video works which are uh, so any sort of expression it can be writing it can be painting it can be uh, sketching it can be creating films or anything might it can be uh, everything and anything is art right now uh, but it has to be the truest form of expression um, and so so this work was so the story behind this work was when i moved to london it was quite cold and i was not so used to the cold um cuz some days it would be minus 1 and 1 and um and i would really feel cold at night and i was sharing my house with two other um one girl and another guy from university and both of them were from the uk and um they would say that hey you know don't switch on the heater so much cuz you know the bills may go up and uh we'll have to share a much larger amount to pay the electricity bills and and i was like okay fine it it's two versus one so might as well just like say yes to them and so but i would feel cold so wh- what i would do after coming back from university i would lit a candle and in my head it would give me sort of this warmth though technically a candle doesn't give you the warmth but it was sort of like this time where and i was lonely i was away from family friends nobody around and i missed home and i had to i sort of missed everything that was that i would call home and every time i would come back from university i would burn the candle and it was sort of like this i don't know it became like a friend to me it sounds crazy but that's how it feels um and it was like giving life to an inanimate object and um and and then one day I saw this candle burning and I was like okay I'm going to film this. So I filmed the candle.
so it's a two minute long film so i thought i'll just show you part of it uh, so you understand uh, art is not just about creating something pretty beautiful it's about the thought that you have and the ways that you uh, the means that you use to express that thought um i could have done the same thing the same expression of trying to share my feeling about how i felt about the candle or the feeling that i had that time by painting a candle but filming it for me made more sense to it because it works with the whole idea of light color and has this quality of depth in it um um like when i saw the when i was editing the film and i saw the film and i felt like it had it had it a world of its own like when you see the circle and you see things around it i felt that there was sort of like a world of its own and that's how all of us have a, like we are owners of our own world and it's on us how we feel about things and uh, yeah do you have any questions I just wanted to tell that it's a beautiful piece of work. So I really loved it out of the three paintings that you have shown. It's a nice uh, one. Thank you. Excellent piece. Thank you. Um, did everybody sleep? Can everybody make at least one little bit of sound? Uh, Andrew, we have one. Oh, yeah, okay. What were you saying, Prerna? We have one question from Ria Bhavnani. She's put it in the chat. You can also read it. It says, uh, uh, do, you "Do we need to have? Uh, yeah. Do we need to have a trained? Uh, do we need to have an eye trained? A uh, trained view to be able to de decipher the intent behind these arts and appreciate these arts in deeper sense, especially for non-artists like me? Would you be talking about those aspects?" Um, um, so you don't need to have an you need you don't need to have a specific way of looking at art um there is no right or wrong it's about having an opinion tomorrow if somebody brings a piece of paper in front of you and just keeps it and just walks away won't you have an opinion towards it won't you have something to say about it right you will have anything you cannot be blinded by it and be like oh okay you'll have something to say about it right so the idea of understanding art is to have an opinion about something so when you see a piece of work and you're not able to understand it and you're confused about it give it time because the piece itself will decipher the meaning for you it's it's sort of like a it's sort of like a relationship um when you fall in love for the first time with a man with a woman of the same sex uh you don't want to know everything about that person right you you want to but it doesn't happen instantly it takes time uh it takes years it takes i don't know how many years but it it's a relationship that you build with it's only when you like it only if you like art and if you think that you want to spend this time to understand it take the time out and read about it speak to artists go to exhibitions understand about art because it will definitely benefit you because somewhere down the line it's going to get close it it's going to take you closer to the whole maslow's hierarchy if you have heard about how many of you know about it the end part of it is called self actualization so i believe personally that art is one of the many keys to attaining self actualization so if you are open to understanding art it will be great um i had an experience with a uh, rothko painting in sf moma once um but i think it took me a while to understand why there were so many layers uh, of color okay. being used because at the end the primary colors that you can see are uh, a, a huge block of red and then below a huge block of blue um okay. initially my interpretation was this is some kind of a sunset on 
know, the ocean. But then, then there was the interpretation of, you know, the opposing ends of like visible light and then, you know, multiple such interpretations. So is it also about that journey of how you're trying to interpret the art? Because I had to sit there literally for like 10, 15 minutes to figure out what the hell am I really looking at? So uh, there is like, um, I ha- I'm i the biggest fan for like Mark Rothko has been the person that I've always looked up to when I've seen colors. Um, and when I'm been to Tate Modern, the same room, which is basically dedicated to Mark Rothko's work. Uh, so when he passed away and he had gifted these works to Tate Modern, he had specified to the museum that it has to be displayed in a certain light condition and in a certain way. And for the last 15, I think 20, 25 years, it's been displayed in the same condition with the same lighting. Um, And his idea, the works are about, it's sort of like a door to something more. Um, And that, that was the idea with which he created these works. Because when you see these works in tape, I don't know if I can show, but there is, I think there should be. Yeah, so this is, for all those people who are not able to relate to this, this is the work. This whole room uh, is dedicated to Rothko's work and all these We still see the presentation, Andrew. Are you able to see the presentation? Yeah, we're only seeing the presentation right now, not the other window. Oh. No? Not yet. Uh, still no, seeing Andrew, the presentation. You'll have to, you'll have to uh, share the other part of your screen. Like you probably shared only the presentation. So if you... You may have to share the whole screen if you want to, if you're trying to show something else other than your. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. One second. I'll just like put it here. Now, are you able to see it? Yes. So, this yeah. is the room dedicated to Rothko's work. Uh, and so the idea with which he made these works were like he was at and and there is this very uh, eerie thing about knowing about yourself when you're when you're in touch with yourself completely you know what's happening to you and you know what's going to happen to you um, and Rothko sort of saw his end coming um, he died of cancer though. Uh, no, he killed himself. Sorry, he he killed. Uh, he committed suicide, and uh, he saw he was in a very depressed state of mind. But these works were his last set of works that he had created, and um, um, and in his writings, these works were sort of a door to something. Not, I wouldn't say supernatural, but the writing said that it was a door to something more, and the idea was to leave the reality and have your own sort of reality. Um, and these are these doors that he created using colors. Um, now, not everybody has to have the same interpretation to the work. That's because I read about these. I'm talking about like, I'm talking it, I'm talking about it in such a way. But if you look at a painting and you don't have any context to it, you have all the rights in the world to have your own context to it because at the end it's you and the work it's your understanding about something so you don't have to uh, obey the laws of art or the understanding of what people have about a particular piece but um, you need to just know how you feel about it the more you are in touch with yourself the more easier it becomes to understand something which is not a part of you. Does that briefly or even closely answer your question? Yeah, uh, I had a follow up, but I can can 
Okay. So there's also this thing about um, psychology playing into these uh, Colors, these works of art. Yeah. For instance, um, you know, I've heard about artists having conditions like synesthesia or something like that, where they uh, or some condition which probably makes them see things a different way, and that's what they exactly project on the canvas. Yeah, there are a lot of. Um, it, it's not just conditions. There's, there are a lot of people, artists who have, in their drunken state or completely uh, drugged on some sort of drug or or are have these lucid thoughts because they have taken some sort of like acid or and have created works which have then become masterpieces like uh, for example this work by Jackson Pollock was created when he was completely drunk he was drunk out of his mind and he was <laughs> in pressure to create a work for uh, one of his commissions that he had received um, happy mistakes I would say but I wouldn't completely put it on the alcohol that made him to paint something like this uh, it's still within him to create a work like this and he kept doing it for the next how many years he survived he was creating works which were in the same sort of form but not that every time he had to create a work he had to get drunk um, so it's basically like by the it takes a lot of time to reach where these guys reach like the, as artists it took them time to know themselves to understand themselves to look within themselves to finally find the kind of work that they produced was in tune with them uh, so it takes a lot um, it's sort of like a movement and it takes its own sweet time but you have to be at it doing it every day uh, in and out whether you have a part-time job or a full-time job on your side to support yourself financially but if you're somebody who's an artist who wants to do it and who's who's curious enough to uh, create works and wants to discover things about themselves or wants to interpret something or uh, has his own world views about things and you want to express it you have to do it every day uh, it's sort of like a ritual that you have to follow interesting okay so there's no trigger of any sort here it's just something that you do over time and you finally discover yeah. that medium of expression or that right medium of expression. Um, like in, in Rothko's case, it was the layering of colors and then those work with colors with Jackson Pollock, it was the drip style. So there's no, uh, there's no methodology to it. There is no right. manual of being a successful artist, a millionaire artist by the next five years. There's no books written like that or they'll never be written like that. Because the one who <laughs> made it never survived. <laughs> so, <laughs> True. So there is no sort of like a shortcut to it. It's sort of like a process, which is great. But it's fun. Uh, it's tiring. It's it's really exhausting emotionally, physically. But by the end of it, what you get out of it is really nice. Like It's a feeling that no other emotion can ever fulfill. No sex, no drugs, no nothing can fulfill that feeling that you get through creating a piece of work which you know has been purely made by your self-expression. Uh, this is a photograph of my studio in London, uh, a messy studio which had to be cleared up later on. Um, sort of like an, I'm just giving you like an in view of how my process has been and how I used to create works or still been creating works. Um, uh, when I didn't have space enough I would take my canvases out in the garden and use materials from the nature to create uh, layers and I would structure my canvases that way. Uh, the marks that I made. Um, uh, so the beauty of abstraction is, uh, I would say, when you give a small kid who doesn't understand language, I'm going to break it as simple as possible. So when you give a small kid who doesn't understand language, doesn't understand words, who cannot speak, and who's just started with the, the mama, and you give him a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or whatever, anything that makes a mark, 
he would still create something on the paper, right? Like, and you would not be able to understand it because you don't get his language. But he'll be able to understand it. Because in his tiny mind, he is still making these marks. And those marks mean something to him. So maybe, for instance, if you give your son, your daughter or your son a paper and he draws something like this, it still means something to the baby. But for you, it must be just like, oh, scribbles, nice. He started scribbling something. But that scribbles is very meaningful for him. So there is a quote by Picasso uh, that says that it took him five years to learn to paint like Raphael. Raphael is an artist who's very closely related to how Michelangelo worked. Uh, you saw the work of Michelangelo. But to paint as a kid, it took him lifetime. Because as you grow up, your expression becomes quite layered. You understand jealousy, you understand pain, you understand a uh, um, lot of other emotions that you feel. You understand uh, cheating, you understand a lot of other things that make your judgment and your expression quite layered. So to reach again a state of mind, an expression that is so pure, it takes time. And my process of working is about reaching that stage of, of mark making and understanding the subconscious mind. Um, and that's what my whole research and study has been about for so many years. Okay. Any questions? Or we'll move to the next part. It's any which is it's the end of the session. So is it like uh, a, Andrew, this is uh, Suresh. Yeah. Um, so my um, uh, intention, right? I mean, I, uh, I mean, the abstract art is there, um, uh, you know, forever in front of me. And I've been to, you know, uh, the Chitra Club Parishad, you know, um, uh, exhibitions, and I've been to the hall separately when nobody was there. So, so what uh, I, 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 I got a lot of information today. Uh, thank you for that. I mean, the different details and the depth that you have uh, shared, but still uh, the unanswered question in my mind about uh, um, you know, this abstract painting is that I completely value the complexity and the uh, you know the level of depth when an artist put his expression into an abstract form but what actually bridges the viewer i mean how does a viewer is expected to connect i see a lot of impurity or at least i perceive a lot of impurity when people you know you have been uh, either um, what do you call uh, forced to understand something out of what you are seeing or you know you are supposed to be uh, uh, finding out some meaning in that one uh, or, or is there something naturally should be emerging out and connecting to the viewer? I mean, what should a, a viewer should get from a, uh, from an abstract painting? Okay. So I'm going to hold that question and then is there anybody who has any other questions or has an opinion or anything else? I think based on this question, it's just, it's, 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 it's a lot like, uh, wine tasting yeah that when someone in front of you is just saying i taste blueberries and pepper and i just look i would probably look at them and say i don't know what the hell you're saying um, yeah, but I'm but saying unless... the wine tasting still has an evidence of taste like taste for taste. example yeah. it still has uh let's break it down to a much easier thing like i would order a, a margarita and i know it has cheese and sauce in it tomato sauce in it and somebody else will have the same sort of feeling closer to it because there, there is an existence of a certain ingredient which is evident, which, uh, which has like a structure, because it has a structure to it. Wine making is a process and it has a structure to it, right? So you have when people taste and palates may be different. So I may taste blueberry, but I may not taste what you taste exactly the same way because our palates are different. And um, yeah. So what happens in, and it becomes much tougher in art is especially in abstract artists because every artist has their own way of creating a work of art. Not, there's no structure to it. There is no right or wrong to it. There is no 
first you take a pencil and then the charcoal and then take paint brush and then the bigger brush and the small brush there is no structure to it um so one there is no answer frankly speaking there is no answer to the question that you asked that how do you decode it like there is no way to decode a subject the only thing that i could say is when you stand at a when you stand at a piece in front of a piece of work and then you you look at it just look at the the way it's structured the way the work is structured the textures to it so later or i have three questions that i would like all of you to keep with you for life when you move into a museum or a or a gallery to see works but the idea is to look at a piece and not have a what sort of like you don't you shouldn't have a structured understanding to it from your perspective but allow the work itself to speak to you as to how you feel about it are you able to understand what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so um how do i make it more simpler um so if you um it's okay for example uh, a lot of us we finish at i don't know if it makes sense but then a lot of us finished our 11th and 12th and then no sorry 11th and then we had to choose between science and commerce or oh, sorry after 10th we had to choose between science and commerce or arts and uh, not that we have less intelligence or like not everybody is given uh, all of us have the same amount of intelligence but it's our interest towards a certain subject that we take a subject uh, it's sort of like a similar inclination towards how art works uh, and not everybody likes abstract art not everybody likes uh, fine work of uh, uh, a, 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 a sort of like fruits arranged in a basket or a, a portrait work not everybody likes it everybody has their own taste to, to a certain thing right uh, but the beauty of abstraction is that because it's non objective and there is no sort of any structure to it and there's nothing within it that's dictating you to think about it it's fluid in the way it is in your mind and it's fluid in the way you understand it um for example if you see a ravi varma i don't know how many of you have seen a ravi varma painting yeah. but when you see a ravi varma painting which is a beautiful portrait which has so much of elements to it again it has a lot of layers to it uh, uh but when you see that painting of this woman holding a lamp and standing that's all you see day in and day out you keep the painting in front of you and that's what you're going to see all the time but what happens with an abstract work of art is every time you walk in what you feel is how you're going to see and and that's how your interpretation towards the towards the work is going to be so if you are upset and if you are sad it's going to be comforting looking at a work of art an abstract work of art but it will still have sort of a same emotion that how you're feeling is how the painting is going to emote because it's open to interpretation it doesn't have a structure to it it's it doesn't make you feel some it's not intimidating i feel like abstract art is one of those paintings or language of art which is not intimidating just because it does like just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it's intimidating or it's confusing if you allow it it's magical it has so much to it okay if 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 i if i um uh, refine my question further is there, is there something beyond visual uh, anything non visual a uh, viewer uh, is eventually getting connected to or supposed to be getting connected to when they look at an abstract because that question is coming when i looked at your um, you know conversation in the dark uh, i mean you mentioned that there is a month of work which is gone and then I, i can since you projected it i can see a layer of work that you have, that you have taken right and um, at the end you know um, um, majority of that image is coming out to be uh, the, the black uh, you know layer at, at the top of it and uh, how does a viewer Uh, I mean, do you expect? I mean, you since you are the painter of that, 
do you expect the viewer to see beneath that at any given point of time or, or... No, not at all like it's it, it's really nice to see people having this different interpretations to a certain work because then it helps you also to see something like when an artist a, a film actor has acted in a film um and he creates this wonderful movie which has crossed the box office and made a lot of money everybody has their own interpretation to the film right they may not like it or they may like it or they may hate it or they may just love it but it doesn't hamper the way that he's creating work he's never stopped creating work and he doesn't expect you to understand the effort or the work that he's put in the whole idea is entertainment uh and here also uh for me as an artist i create that's my job but as a viewer it's your job it's your it's 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 on your will if you want to see my work and appreciate it or how you feel about it i cannot dictate you to feel this way or that way just looking at my work right because it's mm-hmm. your feelings and it's your authority on how you feel so i wouldn't say that there is a certain way to look at a work but it's just about opening up your mind to see something beyond that you don't understand or you're not able to comprehend but you still give it a chance for it to reciprocate to you it's sort of like a back and forth conversation between something that you see makes sense sorry as it makes sense it makes sense yeah okay yeah. i can continue the session for that till like 8 o'clock if you want <laughs> uh so moving on when you move into a gallery or a museum and you're and you're taking your time keep this insight where is it keep this thing inside don't take selfies because that's not the point of a museum it's good to have memories but if you're seriously looking at understanding art give it a chance to speak to you so you go stand in front of it and uh, go around it to see how you feel about it um and observe and not just see observe every inch of it um read about the artist and then maybe later on it's only for people who are interested in art or want to understand more about art okay so it's not a compulsion if you get into a museum if you want to go around and just chill and come back it's fine but if you are serious about understanding art there's a lot of beauty to it because you never know you may find that talent in you and you may end up being the next mark rothko <laughs> without dying <laughs> so give it a chance um uh, okay so this is just an information about if you have any more questions about abstraction or anything related to materials paints how to use them what to do about them you can contact me through instagram email and my facebook page um and these are the three questions that i'm going to give you uh think about it uh if you want to get a screenshot of it so that every time you walk into a exhibition these questions reflect something within you so am i trying to figure out what it looks like or represents rather than allowing something to emerge from it what i see in front of me what are the elements colors and textures of the painting it's very important to see all these things is because then it gives you a much better understanding as to how and why was the work created and maybe it'll get you closer to the meaning of it and no, not the exact meaning what the artist intended but a meaning that you will find looking at these works like before before uh, when you we were kids and we were studying chemistry before a experiment you just don't rush into holding a test tube or a beaker and start mixing chemicals right you would read about it before you start experiencing it so that's the same way a painting works you see the work you understand the colors you see the textures 
before you start experiencing the painting. And at the end, looking at the work, what emotion does this evoke in within you? Makes you sad, makes you happy, makes you upset, makes you want to cry. And does anybody have a question? Okay, also, I, ha I have a very good recommendation for you to understand the art world or the art market. Uh, there's a film called uh, The Price of Everything. I don't know if it's on Netflix. I don't think it's on Netflix, but you'll have to find out how you, you can find out because it's a film. So pirated versions of whatever. Get, a hand, get hands on these, this film and watch it. It's going to do a lot of good. If you, are understand, if you want to understand about art market and how the whole massive market works. Andrew, okay. I yeah. have a quick time check with you. We've got 10 minutes left. And oh, okay. <laughs> I remember you wanted uh, to walk us through. Yeah, so I, I, I think yeah. now let's open up our screens. If, uh, if you guys are open to opening up and sharing your screens and videos. It's okay if you guys don't have makeup or not combed your hair, it's fine. Hi. <clears throat> okay. So that's all. I had asked everybody to get a piece of paper. If you guys have a piece of paper, yeah. a, a little bigger than A4 or just the Air Force size, some sketch pens, some pens, whatever you could find. You guys have it in your hand? Yes. Yeah. Everybody else? Yes. Okay. Yep. So what we're going to do is a very simple exercise. Um, right now, so the only emotion that all of us are right now feeling and are maybe on board with is the COVID-19, which is moving towards COVID-20. Uh, but that's the only painful time that we all are in and all of us are together in it. Um, there's no different, like I'm not happy about it. I don't think anybody else is happy about it unless somebody is. Uh, so, so all of us are feeling almost sort of like the same feeling um, of uh, isolation, of uh, a bit of loneliness, confused state of mind. Maybe some of us have lost our jobs and um, financially quite it's going tough for us. So all these feelings and all these emotions that you have, which is a lot to absorb, um, I would take, I would ask you to take five minutes, shut your screens, don't look here. After, just like, just, let me just finish. So five minutes, take your time. Okay. Feel how you feel. It's okay how you feel about it, but put that, piece of paper that you have in front of you, take a pen, paper, uh, take a pen, sketch pen, crayon, whatever you want, any sort of thing that makes a mark, non-objectively. So no, if you want, you can use words if you want. So words, colors, make marks on the paper. 
and think like I'm not asking you to make a beautiful drawing and show it to me because I'm not going to see it any which ways. But I'm just asking you to create something. Okay, it's an expression. You can be angry or cons frustrated, and you may tear the page apart. But that's still sort of like a conceptual understanding to how you're feeling right now. Uh, and it has to be the most pure form of expression. Okay, so take the time out and five minutes is yours. Actually, let's do 10 minutes. And we don't have much time actually. Okay, so five minutes. minutes. Yeah. You don't have time? The Zoom thing will shut down over after one and no. Hour. Oh. No, I mean, I, I said we have, um, I mean, if, if, okay. if, so five if, minutes, you know, just five minutes to create yeah. this. So you have only five minutes to create it. And after that, just show your drawings on the screen. Don't worry, nobody's going to judge you. Or you can even post it on the chat. Okay, I'm done. Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll just wait for everybody else to finish. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, hi, this is Ashruti. I'm also done with my piece. I'll just uh, switch on my camera. Hey, folks. Um, I just got done with my work as well. Uh, 
So if it would be great if all of you, I think all of you are in WhatsApp group, right? So yeah. <laughs> so all of you can share your. Just take a nice photograph of these images and send it to us on WhatsApp. Don't worry, nobody's gonna sit and ask you. Do it. Nobody's gonna judge you. Interesting. Uh, uh, Prerna, uh, this is Sashruti. Uh, can you just add me in the group because uh, the new group created for Andrew session, I'm not there. Okay, sure. Uh, do you want to? Uh, I'm gonna just put the link of the uh, group, and you can join in actually. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I am in the miniature uh, group. Okay. All right. Just give me a minute. Is everyone done? Yeah. Okay, Sashwati, tell me your number. I can't really. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I can't find the link three, right now. Yeah. Yeah, 735. Mm -hmm. 8080. Eight, eight, yes. 131. Okay, so we're done with time. Okay, now this is Deeksha here. Can you add me to that group as well? Okay. All right, guys. So in that case, um, uh, give me some time. Maybe after the session, I have to get my another phone to add you guys. Actually, so maybe after the session, I will be able to add you, which is, and then you guys can see each other's work and also interact with each other. And so Andrew is also part of the group. So after this, uh, so everybody's done. If you're not done, also it's okay. You can keep it. Aside and uh, maybe work on it later. And I think the session is done. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe in later stages, we may have another session on a little more in depth understanding of abstraction and maybe have some workshops with Art Circle, depending. Um, yeah, and uh, who's the person who spoke last? Uh, uh, who asked me to? Diksha, right? Diksha, you wanted to be added to the group? Yes. Uh, Diksha, I, did you share your number with us in the form? I did. I did I, in the form. Oh, okay. So, okay. I okay. have just shared my number on the group right now on the chat. Can you just add me also? I see. Sure. I would do that. That's Rima here. Okay. Sure. So, any... Any questions that you have or anything that you're confused about or would want to know about more about art or anything else or even starting a career as an artist? I cannot <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah. Hi, Andrew. This is Sashwati here. Yeah. Hi. So, I, hi. Yeah. So, uh, like you were mentioning that you have a job through which you get your, you know, uh, monetary uh, compensation so that you can continue your passion. So, I am also looking for something like that where I want to continue my profession and, uh, uh, you know, pursue my passion as well. So, uh, when I initially uh, planning to take it seriously i'm just not able to know how to go about it because right now i'm in a phase where i sit down uh, as you told making it a practice to learn more so i go on doing my painting whatever little bit i know on the canvas and i continue doing that on a regular basis but from here onwards what should be my next step or after that what is the thing that i should do is something that i am confused about right now you will have to figure out your priorities first um, as to what is more important right now, depending on how, what stage of life you're in. Um, like for me personally, I am 27 now. So, um, and I started off uh, when I was, I think, 17, 18. Uh, okay. When I seriously started creating works and displaying my paintings in galleries and 
it was also like a quite a there was sort of like a i felt like there were times when i was rejected by galleries and it made me feel very disheartened about the situation but nevertheless i kept moving on and uh, galleries that de- rejected me in 2013 called me up in 2016 and asked me saying sir can we can we have your exhibition at our gallery which was amazing okay. and the turnaround was brilliant the feeling to it so it's you'll have to figure out your steps uh, depending on where you are right now uh, and how you feel about things um, and if you want to pursue it professionally uh, but i would recommend that always have a job in your at, at side uh, not because uh, that's the only source of money but also find a job that is interesting to you something that is related to art or maybe uh, something that you like uh, okay so that way you don't get bored of your work mm. and that same boredom and frustration comes in your artwork which will spoil everything so just okay, grow your it. art and your job so okay do something that you love okay uh, so yeah that's what exactly i was asking like uh, so you went on once you had your collection so you, the next step for you was to go and approach the gallery to see if your uh work is at par with their expectation right so that was your next step when yeah you... but i'm saying uh it's not necessary that you have to go to a gallery all the time uh hmm. there is this whole i rena is looking uh, i i i think we can do all the sessions later like the whole idea of yeah. buying and selling and art marketing um because okay. that's also a part of that let's do that for our artists in this group or maybe future groups who want to understand about art marketing and all of that because okay yeah people who are just appreciative of art and they start getting into art market they may not like it they may just get yeah, right. so might as well just yeah. push that for some of the session yeah i mean and i really have i mean i would love to continue but i don't want to hold up more people here uh, but you know all of you so we're just we're trying to create a community where everyone Uh, you know there is easy connect between artists and art lovers and you know amateur artists or people who are trying to get into the field so uh, you know here you already know now andrew you can reach out to him we have created the whatsapp group we also have a facebook group right now which is quite active too so you can join in and uh, and connect with uh, andrew and all the people that we have in the community yeah, yeah sure Okay so it was a great session personally I loved it thank you so much Andrew it was fun uh, this is very different than our previous sessions so every session is so different and it's a different experience and this was unique in its own way hold on to that uh, drawing of yours thanks a lot uh, all of you please hold on to that drawing maybe you you may feel embarrassed about it or maybe if your kid comes to you and he's like dad what did you draw it looks bad don't be ashamed keep it with you uh, <laughs> dwell on it later uh but the best minds to dig about understanding about abstraction or even art in general would be your children like their their expression is the purest so it's fun know their minds and maybe you'll some you'll discover something about yourself in the process okay thank you so much thank you very much sandro take care bye bye Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you.